All right, Algebra 2. Unit 5, Lesson 4, we're going to be working with factoring again. So again, we are going to be factoring and solving polynomial equations. So we've kind of done factoring a lot of throughout the year, a lot of different ways. Um, what we're really trying to do is again factor a number, a factor a polynomial down completely, um, and that happens when it's written as a product of unfactored polynomials with integer coefficients. So, for example, here's an example of a polynomial that's factored completely. Because we cannot break that down any further. Okay, those coefficients inside of parentheses, we can't break down any further. Another example. Th these two cannot be broke down any further. However, here's a couple examples of some that are not factored all the way. Because if we look at this section right here, we can actually say that this is x minus 2, x plus 2. Those middle terms cancel out, <clears throat> but you end up getting negative 2x plus 2x, which goes away. So we're always interested in factoring as com completely as we can. So for example, if I told you to factor completely, x to the third plus 2x squared minus 15x. The first thing I notice is that I have an x in all of my terms. <clears throat> so immediately, you know that you can factor out an x from each term. And now there's, again, different techniques. I, we've been working with the, the factoring X, as I like to call it. So, again, if this is AX squared plus BX plus C, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to get C but add to get B. So, A times C is 1 times negative 15, so negative 15. And B is a 2. So I know that two numbers that multiply to get 15 are 5 and 3. But I need negative 15, so I need a negative 5 or a negative 3. But this is a positive 2, so I need this to be positive 5, negative 3. So I'm going to factor completely by saying X plus 5, x minus 3. One more example. We might have 4z squared minus 16z uh, to the third. This is 4z to the fourth. Plus 16z squared. Again, what do I notice they have in common? One, they all have Z's, and they all have multiples of 4. So I'm going to factor out a positive 4Z squared, and I'm going to be left with Z squared minus 4Z plus 4. <clears throat> because it goes minus, then plus, I know that that's going to be I'm thinking about this, okay, 4, negative 4, that's going to be negative 2, negative 2. So 4z squared, z minus 2, z minus 2, which you could also write as a difference of squares like that. <clears throat> Sum of two cubes, so... 
kind of two things. Again, make sure you have these in your notes. Sum of two cubes. A to the third plus B to the third. Um, it's going to end up being, when you factor it, A plus B, A squared minus AB. Oops. So if we wanted to run through an example, <clears throat> you might have something like 8x to the third plus 27. Okay, if I know that I'm going to write it as uh, I need it to look like this, I could rewrite this as 2x to the third because 2 to the third equals 8. Plus, and I could rewrite this as 3 to the third because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So now I've got my A value and I have my B value. So I'm going to factor this out as 2x plus 3. That's A plus B. And then A squared is 4x squared minus AB minus 6x plus 9. <clears throat> and then... Very similar, but it's the difference of two cubes. And we'll do an example of that. So again, instead of plus b to the third, it's going to be minus b to the third. And you're going to subtract your two values. So slightly different. Make sure you recognize the difference between those two examples. So let's say we want 64x to the third minus 1. Well, I know that 4 times 4 times 4 is 64. So I'm going to say 4x to the third power because I want it to look like this. And then I'm going to say 1 times 1 times 1 is also 1. So now I've got A. B is over here. So I can factor it as 4x minus 1. 16x squared plus 4x plus 1. Again, taking A and squaring it, taking B, squaring it, and then multiplying AB together. <clears throat> uh, the, another method, so again, just kind of going through different methods of graphing, or excuse me, factoring, is factoring by grouping and again just want to mention it again we like to show you lots of different ways to do things so again whatever way works for you if you end up getting the same answer but you did it slightly different that is definitely okay so what i'm going to look for is i'm going to say all right what can i maybe combine or what can I maybe factor out to get something that they have in common? And so what I'm going to notice is I have, hey, right here, I have x to the third and x squared. And then over here, I have a negative 16 and a 48. So what we're going to do is we are going to factor out an x squared from this orange section right here. So if I factor out an x squared, I'm left with x minus 3. So again, that's this orange section right here. And then if I look at the yellow section and I say, okay, 16 and 48. Well, 16 actually goes into 48 three times. So I'm going to factor out a negative 16 from both of these, and I'm going to be left with x minus 3. So that's... And you might say, how did you figure this out again? That's this method. So this method is we're trying to group these numbers together because look what ended up happening. We got the same number here, which is great because now... 
we can combine these two terms. So we're gonna say x squared minus 16, and then we still have x minus three over here. And we can actually break down x minus, x squared minus 16 as to x minus four, x plus four, x minus three. So that is quite a lot of, again, factoring by grouping. It's just another method to go about solving um, factoring problems. Okay. <clears throat> um, we will do one more example. <laughs> I know, I, I think I said that last time. Last example here. Factoring polynomials in quadratic form. So factor polynomials in quadratic form. Our one that we're going to do is 2p to the fifth, eighth power, excuse me, 2p to the eighth power plus 10p to the fifth plus 12p squared. <clears throat> First thing I notice is they're all an even number and they all have at least some degree of p. So I'm going to factor out as many as I can. So the smallest I can is p squared. So I'm going to factor out 2p squared from each. I'm going to be left with with this right here. And then now I can also think about how I would do my factoring X. I'd take A times B, so it's still gonna multiply and get six, but it's gonna add to get five. And the way we can do that is with three times two. So three times two gives me six. Uh, three plus two gives me five. So this stays the same on the outside. But instead of just doing P times P, I need to do P to the third times P to the third because I have a total of P to the sixth. So P to the third plus three and P to the third plus two. And that's going to be my final answer.